to call this meeting to order the October 7th meeting of the Miami Township Trustees in Greene County. I uh, would entertain a motion to adopt the minutes from September 16th. I so move. Second. Uh, I have a couple tiny corrections. Have others sent theirs to Cindy or I have? You have more? You said any email that you might Your email said you might have some others, but you did you corrected the date on the minutes. I did get that. Yeah, there's some clarification, not anything new at all. Okay. Go ahead. Well, we'll need why don't you put my hands clarified. Remember? You didn't say. Okay. I got to keep the minutes up, so you can move Okay, right the, the, on page three, mm -hmm. the second to last line, you say verity instead of verify. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. I said these are minor. Mm -hmm. And then page five, uh, new business, first line, consultant Fred Kauser instead of Kaiser. Uh, that, that was pointed out. I thank All right. You. Yes. Those are mine. Thank you. Page one, out of the page, public notice on agenda items. I do have an additional agenda. Property tax split in 24, request of reimbursement for tax base is 22. Uh, after detailed discussions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, both of you take up the next one payment. Uh, page one. The last line, I see me to know that Ground Mill is no longer functioning as a B and B business. The township would need to ask the county tax assessor to ch change its property tax status to nonprofit. That is true. However, they have not changed, so that is kind of moot. So we might just strike that. Okay. Uh, so Page two, second paragraph, last line. Mr. Boos listed, listed several items that need to be addressed. Rotting wood, painting, flagpole, not flagpole. They don't have one, so that's, hmm. let's cross that okay. out. Page four, second paragraph. Uh, Trust and Mutual Asset Fund, nine hundred and eighty dollars balance of two hundred and ninety special revenue fund. That got, I got very confused. 2902 Grinnell Maintenance, Grinnell Mill Maintenance Fund, which we don't have. I don't know. I, I have no knowledge of the 2902 I don't either. So, I don't. we did speak about the, the 2901, about having I can't, I can't more than $985 in it, and I don't have any preparations to our revenue at the moment. Okay, yeah, so. Uh, but let's let's just pull that last line about the maintenance fund. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Marilyn? I have none. Uh, it's been moved, seconded, and corrected. Um, I guess I'd like to have a motion to adopt the minutes as corrected. I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. We moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of September 16, 2024 as, uh, as corrected. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Ms. Moser? Yes. Mr. Hollis? Yes. The corrections will be made. So, thanks for doing the minutes from the video. It's a challenge. I would entertain a motion to approve payment of bills in the amount of $72,391.62 from the general fund, $8,766.12, from cemetery, $2,188.79, Fifty-two thousand two hundred sixty-seven dollars and 
fifty-five cents, and from road nine thousand one hundred sixty-nine dollars and sixteen cents. I move that we pay our bills. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Please call the roll. We have been seconded to approve payment of bills in the amount of seventy-two thousand three hundred one sixty-two. Ms. Moyer. Yes, Mr. Commissioner. Yes, Mr. Hollister. Yes. Motion approved. Uh, were there items from correspondence that uh, we should put on the agenda? There were lots of correspondence. They were informational at best. No one was asking for. Any action, I don't believe. Or really, so uh, I didn't see anything. You didn't. I didn't. Um, anyone from the public like to add to the agenda? Thank you. No. Take care of public. Thanks, public. Uh, fire department report. Okay, we had a total of 36 EMS calls, uh, 17 fire, uh, two inspections, and just to break down storm related, 11 of those were fire, and roughly half of those were in the township. Um, so anything from wires down, trees down, you know, that typical stuff, and we had one EMS related storm call as well. So a total of 12 incidents for that. Um, we requested mutual aid for one EMS call. I'm sorry, we were requested for one EMS call and two fire calls, and then we received mutual aid for six EMS calls and eight fire calls. Uh, Briefly, where they come from, just for informational purpose? Uh, most of those were Xenia Township. A right? uh, couple from Cedarville. I think yeah, I think two, two from Cedarville and the rest were in the mm -hmm. That's pretty, in terms of ratio, that's pretty typical. Yeah. yeah. Uh -oh. Why did we need six? It just seemed like more than normal. Uh, for EMS, that is, uh, honestly, it's either because we're, it's going to be because we're out on another call. Mm -hmm. And so if, with only having three people here, then there's no way to, to be able to... No, to I, yeah, I understand that. It just seemed like it was just a few more than what we normally see. Um, some of that is also because of having Medicaid one out of service. Um, so it may have been they were on another call. But yeah, it's definitely more than this. Okay. It's also up a little bit because it would have been a three-week period. That's true. So that's skewing out mm -hmm. a little bit too. Yeah. Um, I mentioned the cost, the cost purchase and that we're working with well, Gina and I work on a PO. The total ends up being $67,549.85. That includes installation also. Um, so, go ahead. It seems like we've talked about this guy for quite a while. You, we were just ordering it now. I didn't have the grant money. Oh, yep. Okay. So I could put put it in mm -hmm. if I ordered it before the grant money came in. Mm -hmm. Then we would not be able to use the grant money. Mm -hmm. So that's why. When's the delivery on that? Um, I think it's about thirty days. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. And the grant was from Bureau of Workers' Compensation. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the grant, the so the grant, yeah, I I mentioned this I think before. BWC funds their their, their share is forty thousand. Our share twenty seven. By 49, so not too bad. It's amazing, now, and and that will uh, so that cot will eventually make it into the new net. We're gonna have, we'll have to do a swap, but that would be a big deal. So, in the medic that doesn't have the newer cot, mm -hmm. what what's the difference in what we have to do? Oh, it's completely different. It's totally different manufacturer. But I mean. Is it more more lifting, or what's the functional difference? Um, it does have higher capacity, but it weighs about, I forget, 150 pounds less than what the other cot does. So there are circumstances in which you cannot use 
um, the lifting mechanism. Um, some, you know, with stairs and some of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the Ferno cot weighs, um, it's 375 pounds. So then you put the patient's weight on top of all that. It's, it's, it's bad. Very heavy. Um, let's see. Um, you guys know, prior aware, we had a tree fire in the Glen. Fortunately, we just were able to stretch a hose line back to it and not have to do a bucket brigade. Is that before, during the drought? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was. Um, we are very, very fortunate. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. Um, there was a fair amount of fire around the base of the tree and, and all that, so I mean, it, it would have it been bad. Uh, as I mentioned, Medicaid one is out of service. Um, it's getting, it's having a couple of different things that need to be done at Springboro because of, of being a band chassis. Because they're so much more difficult to work on. Uh, we also had a car fire. No return date on that potential? No, I actually, I sick to Peyton on to find out what the heck is going on. And hopefully, because I'm like, you know, we got street fair. Yeah, when did it go there? Uh, it's been there for three weeks. Ask me more about that offline. Okay. Um, pump and ladder testing is coming up. We got pump tests that those are um, actually on Wednesday, so that'll be both engines and the tanker. Um, and ladder stuff is in November. Those are, of course, all required by NFPA uh, for standard compliance. And the Light Pack 35 is now in service. We've got that all set up. Everybody trained on it and. It's pretty amazing. Is that a defibrillator? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we might think about sometime paying for it rather than continue paying installments. Mm -hmm. Sure. I guess this cost we have to figure that out once we get our stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess there's no reason to be paying. Right? Yep. I find it's a piece when we have money to make. For me, it's easier in your report if. If you spell it out, I like keep forgetting it. about that. It's so it's because it, that's that's how we all. It, I, it I is. I just always forget. You know, inside the, the professional yep. bubble, you you know the acronyms, but I don't. Um, <laughs> we are going to um, probably do this this week. I um, we're going to buy an Apple TV. And um, you know, which is a streaming box. If you don't know what that is, to stream TV and switch to YouTube TV and cancel Spectrum. That's good. Um, mm -hmm. Apple TV is seventy-five bucks a month, mm -hmm. and I forget what we're paying for Spectrum, but it's one hundred twenty-five, or I don't remember. I totally forget because that's not a bill I usually see. Um, so we're going to get that done because uh, there's no point. In and what expert save us some money. That's all I have. Questions? Can the public ask a question? Of course. Um, so there's a burn ban, right, until mm -hmm. the end of the year? How, uh, what about Halloween? <laughs> um, Are we doing the bonfire? Uh, it, lo it looks like the bonfires will be fine because of um, all of the rain that we got. Okay. Um, Unless something, there could be a last minute change to that, but that's the direction that I'm heading. But that is, that is, um, those are considered, they're considered recreational fires and because it's, uh, they're going to be definitely there and they have to have a fire extinguisher and everything. Okay. So I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with that unless we go into another ground. Right. Different question. Um, is there, was there some forensic evaluation of who started the fire in the Glen? Is that a thing? And you probably don't do it, but maybe you do, I don't know. Um, actually, we do. Um, however, that was not done. There was somebody arrested for it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually forgot to say that, so. That reminds me, there, there are some constituents very concerned about something. 
Could you speak up a little bit? Um, there are some constituents very concerned about something that I've heard about, and that was um, last year for the first time we, we had small candy bars that you threw out at Halloween, mm -hmm. and several of our non-voting constituents noticed that we didn't have full-size candy bars. And <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder that since that's what you guys are known for, like people chase the truck because you put... Yeah, that that was that honestly was a cost saving measure because candy is so yeah, outrageously so expensive now. I wonder if we want to consider we we uh, back the full size. We bar. were. Um, I was going to say that cost us. I can't remember what it cost us last year, but the year before it was around seven or eight hundred dollars. And, yeah. and I can't remember what it cost us last year, but it really is. Okay. Candy is outrageous. What's wrong with small candy bars? <laughs> There's a big difference <laughs> between. Back to when you were, well, maybe not you, I, I was talking your sugar age. was poison. <laughs> we'll go with that. Well, there's a big difference between a big, a big candy bar and the fun size. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's the thrill of the big candy bar. But well, I agree. You I agree. But I um, did. I did hear about that, by the way. <laughs> it's in your minutes if you, if you want me to actually find it. It's the fair, is isn't it? Um, this weekend, Saturday. It's uh -huh. And you guys are. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're we're good. And, we're ready with that. But. And I don't know where there was a big last year, a big thing about billing and how much we were. Wasn't it? It wasn't about that. How, how were we going to do it? And um, what our was that? What our actual costs are? Give them a real number alongside the number we're giving them. Yeah, I I, it's a lot to do this year, but I, honestly, and I keep forgetting to provide that with them. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> right. The, the brain's not working. So maybe. Uh, Excuse me. Maybe this. You know. Maybe this year we can co collect the costs from this one and be ready for next time. Don't you do it post? Yeah. Street fair, so then you know what you put in it, and so then I mean, mm -hmm. that's what I thought. Yeah, but but I. Um, um, we wanted the idea was that they were going to get ahead of, uh, get it ahead of time for budgeting purposes, yeah. just to make it easier. And that and, and the chamber did formally request that. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anything else for the fire? Well, back in the old days, not my old days, but just old days, um, it used to be when you were. You know, thinking whether you want to adopt some program or something. You know, the, the term at the time was, you know, well, let's run it up the flagpole and see how it does. Yeah. Well, we would have a difficult time doing that for the last two or three years because we don't have a working flagpole. Yes. And I was told many months ago that while well, the ground was so soft, yes. We couldn't get anybody there uh -huh. because we you know, tear the. Well, as I recall, the ground got pretty hard for a while. Yes, it did, and I didn't think about no. it at the time. And I, now, it, it, I'm not sure if it's too soft. Um, I'll try and remember to check that tomorrow. Maybe a kind text message reminder. Do we have a flag? Or do we need a We need, we we need a new flag. Yeah. Because I, I was messing around there, and you can actually hoist a place to flag up there now. It wouldn't be ideal, but it, it, it will hold the flag. Um, Did you? Because I, I, I didn't personally check it. I was just and, um, I think the um, rope's supposed to go inside, but it doesn't have to. But yeah, I think I'm just going to order a flag with your permission. And then I'm going to run it. I'm sure the chair would be. Well, my, ahead. and my goal was actually was to, to go one size up in flag. But okay. that requires some changes to the halyard, oh. Um, oh. and I don't know how that? much of a pain that would be. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know why we I, I would call What's the contractor myself. Advantage in getting a bigger flag. I'm sorry. What, what, why would we go to a bigger flag? The the smaller flag. It's not proportional to the size of the pole. Okay. It should be one size up. Yeah. Well, let's let the two of you sort this out. <laughs> okay. I don't know 
what kind of contractor you call to like, fix your flagpole. I don't know if any specialized. Well, the last time we did it, we just we had the village come out with the bucket truck and we fixed it that way. And, yeah, because that's the only way you get to it. Anything more? No. Cemetery and road report. Uh, our sexton is back from vacation, but not present because he has, am I right, he has COVID? He's been ill. Been ill. Uh, Hopefully be back tomorrow. On the job. Okay. Now I know you drove so before, before going into roads. Anything about cemetery? Um, I only know that there was just a single burial, and I don't remember where he had it uh, in the last period. It's been very quiet. Mm -hmm. He just sold two additional graves today in the Oak, Oak Grove Cemetery. Um, I think it was the I think it was ashes in the prairie, natural burial. Prairie. It was in the burial prairie. Mm -hmm. um, so he's had a chance to uh, mow the new grass now in the different parts of our responsibility. Uh, Roger has been mowing um, under my father, one care person, and back on the job since what July. He's had a nice vacation. Um, to, my recollection is that we pay a lump sum for the year. Is that adjusted when we don't have to have mowing? No. We pay it quarterly and it's just based on a lump sum, yes. Okay. Cool. Whether they mow or not. So he has a great vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, I go through the... Um, the old cemetery got hit pretty hard by the storm. There's some things that don't think so. Mm -hmm. That's all we've been out. Was it? Well, in both cemeteries, actually, in Clifton and Glen Forest, there, were, there was a big tree with a big limb that dropped. Um, and lots, lots and lots of little limbs. Yeah, and he's, he's been out cleaning them all up. Roads. I got one call Friday night, or not Friday night, Friday afternoon on Glen Road, and uh, Brandon went and cleared that. You drove Saturday morning. Well, that's Saturday morning, yeah. And didn't see anything. But then the day you said you got a phone call. Uh, I, I, can't <coughs> I can't believe that yet. Okay. okay. There's, there's information. And, um, in actuality, that's really Dan's department, and he's aware of it, and he's going to figure out the ins and outs of what happened. Okay. Um, yeah, I drove it Saturday morning, and um, we were all our roads were clear. It was, you know, there were some things along the arms that, that he had to go pick up mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of the week, but nothing that <coughs> nothing required immediate attention. That was about 10 a.m. Saturday, so it was after the bulk of the storm. A fiscal, fiscal officer's report. We don't have spreadsheets today. I missed the email. Is there a reason, or is it just because everything's in flux, or that's going to resume, right? Okay. She says it will resume uh, next week. Okay. That's the room After she gets, she's, she's saying there's not much change, which we all know, but now that she is up to date mm -hmm. on paying the invoices, uh, and they're, well, they, they will be on. entered you know, into the correct codes. Um, okay. I thought they were in, I, I must not, I mean, obviously I don't know the way in that well, but. If she pays something, I mean, at least on the check stub, it says what, what fund it came out of. Yeah, that's nice And you think it would be already in that fund's information, you know. Yeah. It is once she, once she hits that post button. <clears throat> that's that's what the, it's updated automatically. So I'm not sure why she's 
Maybe we put more stuff in it. Yeah. Well, is there anything else for the record? Your change of permanent appropriation would be under that. Um, sure. <laughs> I mean, I was going to do this all this mess together, but let's do this one now. We have a change of a permanent appropriation so that we can um, transfer the funds to pay YSDC okay. the money we have. Shall I read that? Sure, Don. Is this the one you mean? Yes, sir. Doesn't say YSDC. Well, I didn't say why we were putting uh, it. <laughs> Resolution 2024-29, Amendment of Permanent Appropriations, whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the Miami Township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. General Fund 1000-110-599, general fund, other expenses, increased by $10,000. And I thought since the like, so September sorry. 16th, oh. do I hear <laughs> date October 7th, do I hear a motion to adopt this? So moved. I second. So my understanding is this this is a step towards paying YSDC. YSDC our share. Yeah, and I put it in a fun, uh, in a line item where it said other expenses, and it, that's it, the closest it came to fitting something. Mm -hmm. But there are multiple other expenses. Yeah. We just choose one. Yeah. That's a so as, as someone who just complained about acronyms, this is Yellow Springs Development Corporation and our share of the uh salary for a new uh, director thank you uh any discussion okay. let's call the roll it's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2024-29 amendment of permanent appropriations as enumerated um uh, mr Merger. yes Ms. Meyer. yes mr Hollister. yes the resolution is adopted Mr. Chair, may I request a point of clarification? Yes. Since we have a literary scholar amongst us, for, <laughs> for many years I have struggled with, is it the Miami Township or is it Miami Township? Ms. Scholar? <clears throat> I would go with just Miami Township. Thank you. Um, there are multiple Miami townships, so it cannot be the. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a good. But there's all there's only one Ohio State. So. <laughs> <laughs> we could argue that another time. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my take on it. Thank you very much. That, that I will rest easily this evening. <laughs> Whatever it takes. I, I I would recommend the exhibit at Antioch, uh, in search of Cuba. Where there are like a dozen Cubas to. Is it? Well, like Cuba, Ohio. It's irrelevant to the business, sorry. <laughs> but if it said in search of the Cuba, would that help? <laughs> what brought that up? Did I have? Yeah. Okay, moving on. Uh, zoning, ins zoning inspector's report might be a time to bring up a new zoning inspector. Um, I thought, did you understand that he was going to be here tonight? Mm -hmm. I did too. I, I'm disappointed. Do um, you want to wait? No. You might oh, be thinking the meeting eight. starts at 6. No, 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 no. Oh, I thought you meant wait till another time to appoint him. No, I want to appoint him ASAP. Mm -hmm. um, not a point, I'm sorry. Higher. Um, I had his resume here. Brian Lucas, he is the. Um, he was a very effective zoning commission member at Bath Township and was rec highly recommended to us. And um, looking, he loves Yellow Springs and he's looking forward to, and he appears to be a go-getter. And um, He has no experience. In that say. position. Yeah, in that position, but we are confident that he will pick it up quickly and efficiently and accurately. 
right, let's get a great interview. Yeah. Well, well, I would entertain a motion to appoint him. No, we, we're going to hire him. Right? Yes. I move employer. that we employ him. I move that we um, hire Brian Lucas to be our zoning administrator and change it to administrator to re more accurately reflect the actual job. Mm -hmm. At the um, wage of twenty-five dollars per hour, mm -hmm. and we put a limit on that of um, twenty. Uh, Plus or minus, not to exceed. Not to exceed twenty hours per week. Week. Mm -hmm. Did we? Yeah. Okay. One hour per week. Effective immediately. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, discussion. I have none. I have none. Do, do you need to, or, would you read the motion, please? It's moved and seconded to hire Brian Lucas as the new zoning administrator, uh, noting the change of title uh, at $25 an hour, not to exceed 20 hours per week, effective immediately. And it's Brian with a Y. Brian with a Y. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, we prepared to vote then. I'm sorry. I just wondered if he'd been interviewed or how you came to across this person. We have interviewed him twice, yes. And did Mr. Hollister participate in that? I have not. I I deferred. Thank you for okay, he came highly recommended by a previous zone administrator from Bath Township. But not from active work in this kind of position. He doesn't have experience in that. Just trying to understand the okay. mechanism. It is a very competitive field. There are shortages of people in all fields. And uh, when, we, when we did a very wide search, we got people from very unrelated fields trying to um, yeah, it's Good job. Good job. <laughs> So is it okay to ask what his prior position was at Bath Township? He was um, the chair of the zoning commission. Still is. Still is. Yeah. He's. Um, he doesn't need to. He doesn't need to discontinue that that job in Bath Township to do this one. It's not a conflict. He was a senior operations manager for ten years in the Army National Guard. Um, and was a private business owner, and he works for an auctioneer. Um, he uh, sets up, he manages weekly auctions and things like that. So that's his day job. But he's become very interested in zoning, and would like to break into that field of zoning and I think township administrating in general. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Ms. Please Meyer? call the roll. Ms. Meyer? Yes. Mr. Mucher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion to approve? Mm -hmm. uh, this being the first meeting of the month, we won't have standing committee reports. Uh, under new business, uh, I have a resolution to contract with Intelliprax LLC, Frederick Kauser, who has been working with us. Uh, so resolution 2024-2030. Resolution to con contract with Intelliprax, Frederick Kauser. Whereas Miami Township is going through major organization shifts due to a new fire chief, new fiscal officer, and a transition from volunteer to professional and fire rescue, professional fire and rescue services. Whereas the Board of Trustees of Miami Township has worked with Fred Kauser on two different organization development contracts since May of 2024. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of Miami Township does hereby agree to retain Fred Kauser through Intelliprax LLC as an ongoing consultant 
or $4,000 per month. This may be terminated by vote of the board at any time. I second. Second. I know that, uh, I guess we didn't put the language in. I, I know it sounds like it's an ongoing permanent arrangement, although it, it does say it can be terminated at any time. But in reality, it is approximately 12 months with the hopeful anticipation that's less than that. So yes. I, I don't want to make it sound like we're committing to somebody for 50,000 a year or whatever that ends up being. Oh, uh, really. we, I don't know, circulated is the right word. He's been, his, his list of recommendations was presented uh, at the end of his last contract. And he estimates those would take a year to um, okay. put in place. Although he says the 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 shift uh, could take five years, but we don't need him for that that mm -hmm. time. But to help Denny come up to the various steps. Uh, uh, with the organization and our new fiscal officer. And, uh, and the township in general, there, yeah. are, there are needs that we have that, that we really can't handle efficiently in-house. Uh, He's gonna direct us where to go, who to see, what to do. Yeah, I'm, just I'm impressed with the township that he, he, so to speak, grew up in and is, as I understand him, first as a volunteer firefighter, then as a paid firefighter, then as fire chief, Mifflin Township, next to and around Gahanna, east of Columbus. Uh, I don't imagine we're going to develop to the size of of Mifflin and Gahanna, but they were quite small and over the last 40 years changed dramatically. Uh, so he's lived what we're just beginning. Uh, Danny, do you have anything you'd like to? Well, we are obviously, you know, that experience with him is exceptional, positive, and, and great. And I'm thankful for the board that, you know, taking this next step. Um, the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association is kind of in the process of, so they, they, they're in the process of recommending a chief to me who would be somebody who's also gone through this um, sort of as, I guess you might say, a mentor. Um, so hopefully we have that uh, not too far down the road. I have a name. We're just waiting to make sure that that person is willing to do that. So th this is would be a professional relationship, but yeah. not paid. Correct. Okay. Yes. No money on the Sort of like go see him once a month or pick up the phone and call. You know that kind of thing. And that was something that you know that was one of his recommendations. One of Fred's recommendations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's very exciting. I'm, you know, definitely 100% on board with this. Um, and I, I think the, the, you know, the staff is to uh, at least stay off, you know, the officers are, have met with them as well, so. Does the staff generally know that we'll be going to mm -hmm. be the country's process? Yeah, it's been readily yeah. shared with everybody. Mm -hmm. Good. That should be some tension and things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Agreed. Any comments, discussion, questions? Um, sorry, well, I just wondered what, um, you know, knowing that it's kind of month by month, what are, what is he kind of going to be, what are you all going to be focusing on this, like, in the immediate future in terms of, I mean, I've read his report from the last 
you know, his analysis and everything. So what? What I'm will going to be, but there's only, I'll rattle off. You guys can point, please. So we're listing. We're um, starting. We need to um, get a, a firm schedule of our salaries. What do they call that? A step. A step schedule of salaries, which you don't have. Make us compliant with all the the uh, human resources rules. Um, get training and um, training for the staff. For lack of a better word, diversity training and different things. Um, like DEI? Or? Uh, no, it calls it a. I wouldn't say DEI, but various. Um, get, us, get us compliant, uh, upgrade all of our policies and procedures, make us compliant with different um, expectations for payroll. Um, so and everything you recommended, essentially. Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> the de development of um, the fire and rescue staff, not not only the chief, but the second and third in command and everyone. Um, review and development of the procedures of the fire department. Just a lot of things that, as it's been said so many times before, we were a, a volunteer department and now we are a professional department but haven't really made the, our systems aren't as, haven't kept up with our job, so it's going to help us oh, out. So. We have a, a fire department, uh, what's, what, what do we call our procedures or rules? Or, and we in have township and they're, in a couple cases, they're contradictory. Mm -hmm. Procedures manual. Yeah, procedures manual. manual. Uh, li little things like that, but the, We have not agreed on you know, the immediate this month priorities. So that's with who ongoing. does he work closest with you or with you? Initially, they'll be work with fiscal officer and the chief. Gotcha. Uh, but longer term, it's overwhelmingly with the fire department. Okay. One way he put it that we <coughs> is the thirty thousand feet, the, the long term. What what if this then that? Do we have a do, do we have a plan for what would happen? He used the example of let's just say you know tomorrow Danny dies. Sorry. <laughs> you know, Throw me under the bus. Are we in a position that we have somebody ready to take, you know, ready to take his position? Can they step in and, and fill it? Not 100%, but is there a person there? And on, on down the chain, too, you know, because that person then has got another job. But, you know, is that the sort of thing that we've got in place? Who we don't have in the world? Because we just, I mean, he just started, you know, kind of, and this one. So that's going to be looked at. Same token, what if the, you know, what if the three of us were out driving around and got hit by a bus full of. Uh, and we're, we're not there. What, you know, what do we do? What happens? What's, is there a plan in place? Uh, that sort of thing. I love you. A lot of the practices are in our heads and not gotcha. the processes are internalized and not externalized. Well, if, if they both decide not to run next year, then you know, we gotta we gotta know what to, what to tell somebody to do. Mm -hmm. And same with our fiscal officer. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, we we're certainly are we're going through a lot of teething there. Mm -hmm. And um, Yeah, it all makes sense to me. I just yeah. I'm looking for good quotes, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> good quote fishing. That's <laughs> great. Uh, and Fred just loves Yellow Springs. Mm. Got that impression. I, I gave him a, a, a tour. He loves Dino's. <laughs> we don't have to um, Yes, he does. <laughs> we went for coffee downtown, and then this was just last week. I, uh, he said, "You know, I'd, I'd like to walk across Antioch," and I gave him a tour of the college. And I won't be surprised if he pitches them for <laughs> contract. He he loved the wellness center. He loved the library. 
Are you on any of this? Uh, oh, yeah. That's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, back to uh, this resolution that is before us. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. I think we're finished discussing it. Uh, I don't think we need to reread the whole thing. Would you call the roll? Ask uh, so who can second it to adopt resolution 2024 30. Uh, contracting with Inter Intellicrafts LLC for the accountant. Uh, Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Mushin? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion resolution is adopted. On October 7th at 6, <laughs> no, at 5.50. I think that was a major event in Miami Township history. Uh, next topic, amendment of resolution 2022-16 regarding ARPA funds standard allowance. Okay. First, I think I'd like to make a motion to, um, a couple months ago we made a motion to um, set aside money for a potential conservation easement through the ARPA funds. And we found that to make it more efficient, we should, um, i make a motion that we budget that actually in our general fund budget for next year. Okay, Rather than that. take it directly from ARPA funds. Would you repeat what you just said? Um, that that we um, that the money that y'all loaded for 120,000 for green space potential green space funds. Loaded 113 Right, right on that. Okay, we have 130 in the fund. <clears throat> Well, we had a specific, we stated a specific amount. Please don't whisper about it. Okay. We have $130,150.59 in our bill. Okay. And we would like to budget how much of that for a potential easement next year? All the 10 grand. Oh, so. One hundred twenty thousand dollars for one hundred twenty thousand one hundred fifty dollars and fifty nine cents. Okay, you say so. And, and you would like that? Well, to be drawn from the general fund in next year's budget. Because as it turns out, it's not going to happen right away, yeah. and um, and our ARPA funds are are to be. Um, obliged by December 31st. So I, I just suggest that we take it up. We budget it for next year's budget um, in the general, from the general fund. So you made a motion. Do I hear a second? I need to call them out again, please, if you're being specific. I'm 120, sorry. 150, and 59 cents. 120,000, 150 dollars, and 59 cents. I mean, we could have spent the 150 on the holiday party or <laughs> something. We still can. We still can. It's just going in the general fund. Okay. Thank you. Right. Do I hear a second? Second. <clears throat> Please call the roll. I'm trying to get the wording on this motion correctly. Um, it's been moved and seconded to. Yeah, that's a tough one. I know. Basically, transfer what fund it's in. I'm sorry, we have it. Well, this that's a separate resolution. We can't oh, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, we kind of had to undo. We, we said we were going to take it straight from the ARPA fund, mm -hmm. and that's not possible. Right. So, okay, we've been moved and seconded to um, budget to from budget the general to make, fund. To make from the general fund budget next year the previously approved conservation easement funds commitment, commitment um, the and amount of 120, 150, And no longer take it from our fund. Well, well that's, that's a separate, but I'll now be a resolution. That I'll, 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 I'll
write it out completely. Um, Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Moucher. Yes. Mr. Hollison. Yes. The motion is approved. The original conservation of uh, easement commitment was stated at 113 more or less. It was it was not a specific dollar amount set. Okay. And that was from the previous. It probably picked up interest or something yeah. along the way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so this resolution is an, an amendment to a resolution we made in, in back in 22, when we were originally going to use the you know, funds in a s specific fund. So now we have to. Uh, and this is 2024-31. Resolution 2024-31. Yes. It is written by a lawyer, and it's getting late, so I, I highlighted the um, the highlights. Amendment of Resolution 2022-16 are the final rule at use of standard allowance. Whereas this date, October 7th, 2024, Trustee Moyer moves to amend specifically page three of the attached resolution from 22, passed on March 21st, 2022. Whereas the township has received a distribution of money from the American Rescue Plan, and um, whereas the Department of Treasury final rule published um, becoming effective April 1st, 20, 20, 2022, provides that Treasury presumes that 10 million in revenue has been lost due to public health emergency recipients. And it, allow, it allows townships a standard allowance that provides an estimate of revenue loss that is based on extensive analysis by the state okay so we're allowed we are allowed to they made a final rule in which um, small entities can um, claim the money as revenue loss um, as long as it's small entities that are receiving less than 10 million in order to cut through a lot of government red tape that was making the process very difficult you're describing <coughs> the point you started formally yeah, reading this, Would and I don't, want, I don't want you to read the whole thing, uh, but I want to make it clear that... So would you back up and make a formal synopsis, like maybe read the, the first few whereases and then skip to the end? You just say, now therefore it is hereby resolved by the board that... Yes. This part. She was working her way there. Yeah. Well, you started okay. discussing it rather than reading it. That's because it sounded like Greek. It, it, it does. Uh, um, so anyway, big plan ARPA funds. These are all the things you can do with this. Uh-oh, those small entities, you don't have to go through all those hoops. You can simply, um, we'll publish a final rule or you, we could have a standard allowance that allows you to take um, claim revenue loss and just um, use it to reimburse yourself for things that you've paid for along the way since we've got these funds. Here's the juicy part. Whereas the Board of Trustees has identified a project in which in the judgment of the board qualifies as permitted use of ARPA funds in direct support of governmental services, which consists of the following. We will re reimbursement, this is our, our take, reimbursement for governmental and administrative services, including salaries, compensation, and contracted services, and the accounts, and I list the accounts that we're in which we're going to reimburse ourselves. Now, therefore, the township elects to, use, elects to use the standard allowance and its presumption of revenue loss due to public health emergency and to use the amount authorized here to fund governmental services. The project is hereby authorized and shall be paid for from ARPA funds in the amount of and not to exceed $130,150 $130, $130, $130, $130, $130, $130, $130, $130, in the category of general, general government administration. Sorry, it's so complicated, it's a complicated business. Did you move or did you just? 
I moved as part of Second. as part of the break. And so I'll second it. Second by Chris Meacher. And I want to say I, I thank you for doing this and honoring the uh, conservation easement that you were not one of the active supporters of. Uh, but you've honored that, and that's, gonna, that's still in place in our budget. And you're making sure we don't get caught as the deadline for ARPA filing approaches. Awesome. Yes, awesome is right. Yes, awesome is right. So it's been moved and seconded. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2024-31, amendment of resolution 2022-16, ARPA final rule, use of standard allowance. Exactly. Ms. Moore. Yes. Mr. Meacher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Resolution is adopted. Good luck with that one, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, maybe I skip it? No, no. <laughs> it was really a formality. So now, wait a minute. All this was old business. We have to start all over. Uh, <laughs> it was really just a formality to make sure we do things right. Yeah. The government things. I so that was our new business. I don't I don't have any old business. I have one piece. Yes. Um, if you recall, I made a small presentation to the board uh, about the potential of uh, establishing a pine forest walkway for cremated remains, and I contacted a, a landscape architect to. Uh, flesh that out for us, and I'm going to see a presentation of that tomorrow on a Zoom call, mm -hmm. and I'll let you know what that looks like. Hopefully, I'll be able to get okay. some get some uh, show and tell. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was interested as you go through that. You had mentioned that the one you saw was you could scatter remains and put. Um, Put a headstone anywhere. Like, and I, I wonder if there's a, a variety of options, like maybe a variety of models of how they do that. Uh, perhaps I'll, yeah. I'll find that tomorrow. Yeah. Um, it, it, I, I think I misspoke. It's not that you can put them anywhere because this is going to be uh, um, formalized. There would be a, a, a formal path decided and then from the path there will be plots oh. so you can keep record of who's where and, oh. and, and when so you can't just put it anywhere but you can but there's an awful lot of variety of the, in a section of where you can put it so they're very prunes oh yeah mm -hmm. oh okay yeah they're not above ground I thought it was scattered, and then just a st I thought you were going to scatter and then just put a stone in there somewhere to, to commemorate you could scatter but uh, I think mean, the majority of them are in, in, in encapsulated in some biodegradable uh, container and then placed in the ground. And then the marker, the boulder, or the flat stone would be on top of that. And there's a number that's associated, that will be associated with that, and that number would then be codified and put in a computer, and, and you'd be able to tell any member of the public, or they'd be able to search, you know, where they're loved one is and it would show on the map the location. Okay. Um, that reminds me of two two pieces of old business. Sorry guys. Okay. <laughs> um, remember when Jer Jerome Borchers were here, we agreed that we would um we, we would be willing to hire someone I, I remember it as fifteen hours a month, but when I look back at the notes today it was ten hours a month. Doesn't matter, it probably is gonna be about that. And um, we found this wonderful person, JT, um, JT, is his last name, I don't know, um, who, who immediately took some pretty large steps of, that we had to take, but is now ready and willing to do the, the, the like the 10 hour a month thing because he moved to the township from Cincinnati and he's renting a place two doors down from the cemetery. So he goes in there often 
and is a perfect person to be able to watch out. He, he was, he's waiting to see that the effects of what he's put into place and what pops up next and how fast things return and what practices work and what practices don't. Did you move here just for that position? No. Oh, okay. You mm -hmm. moved here for a girl, <coughs> a woman. <laughs> but, <laughs> Hey, but they, they, they happened to move in near the, near the tip. So I, I don't know if I should have said that. <laughs> Your son is one one house away. Yeah. So two houses. To the north. Oh, to the north. Oh, okay. Yeah. After Shady Grove, or Sh Stony Grove. Stony. Yeah, Stony and then... Then the empty, the empty lot. And then, uh, I think it's in the driveway then, after Pipers or something. But I'm not trying to... I already told him that Must he three parts of all. I don't want so to tell him where he lives, too. So this is the fellow who's doing work on the prairie. Yeah, very, very knowledgeable prairie guy. It's not a volunteer, but it's a prairie caretaker. Prairie mm -hmm. caretaker. Keep an eye on it. Prayer. prayer. Correction, of course, corrector. <laughs> um, and, and where's the money coming for this? It's a good one. And how long do you think this, this will be a standing? I think 10 hours a month standing, just like we, we um, have a standing maintenance for all of our mm -hmm. families, <laughs> for all of our paying customers. Or until they break up. And, and you had another item? I, I shouldn't have said that on camera. Um, maybe I could edit that out. Um, the other item is, I have talked to the board. I talked to, I need to have these notes. Um, Fred, you were at the last zoning commission. I think the zoning commission is on the verge of coming back to us, because I talked to one of them today, with no action on the, what we're calling the mid-sized solar. And um, one of, several of our constituents and, and our commission member went to hear Dale Arnold who has now become the aficionado on what we're going to call community solar. Not to, not to confuse community solar, but this, between the little personal and the big um, Commercial. industrial, they're going yeah. to call it community solar now. The lo lower than 49 megawatts. And what, what I found out from him, and this is basically a lot of what he does now, is talk to people about this because he's following it. This is from Dale. This is from Dale, I, not our Dale. Dale from the Farm Bureau. Right. So Bill 400 and Bill 197 on this factor, on this subject, both had six hearings each and no action taken as far as establishing any guidelines for community solar. Mm -hmm. There's still Wait, please trying. repeat the, those are House Bill. House Bill 400 and House Bill 197. Mm -hmm. That's Ohio House Bill. And those and, were proposed and not adopted. Yeah. But then there was another more, in the, in the General Assembly, there was something called HB 501 that was, had, had a whole bunch of things in it and added a little amendment at the end about this community solar. And it says, if a company were to come in and, and want to put a facility less than 50 megawatts, they should confer, they, will, they are conferring power of citing it to the BZA of a township. Power. The power of citing it. They means the, the Congress. Oh, it gives the power it gives of citing power. it to BZA. Which is unfortunate because our BZA is not up to speed on this. But also he said, but there is, I think he said there's two zingers about that, which throw a wrench in the work. It says zoning must be in effect first for this to happen. And I, I admit I don't understand all this. And there has to be, they need prerequisites rules for citing from the state. So that they, 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 in order to do this, they need prerequisite rules from the state, but they've already conferred the power to the BCA. So, but the um, BCA has to use the prerequisites from the state. Yes. Right? Has this bill passed, or it's still also a bill yet to pass? No, the, 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 the bill passed that confers the power, if I'm saying that right, to the BCA. But the thing it's predicated on has not passed yet, so it's kind of a screwy mess. <clears throat> that sounds so familiar in state law. Mm -hmm. So I am in favor of 
the, the, the Howe Township Association has had having Dale come talk to them, and also, um, who else? Somebody else, is, he's going to talk to somebody else. Zone. Maybe the Green County Township Association they might talk to. I'm in favor of, and he would love to come talk to us about our own unique situation so that our VZA can understand it better. I think that's a wonderful idea. I, I don't always agree with Dale, but I have a very high regard for him. And, and he's the fellow who came before, mm -hmm. uh, before Kingwood came. Kingwood, yeah. He came to talk about what to include if, you, if you're a property owner, what, what to make sure to put in a in lease agreement with anyone coming, any company coming to you for solar. Uh, and then I've been around in, in other Farm Bureau stuff for 20 years. Um, so, so he's, yeah, let's invite him. So he's a, I was thinking, did, did you, uh, I would have it not at one of our regular meetings. That's what I was going to say. But okay, something yes, including sorry. BZA, but open to others. Right, a public meeting inviting the BZA and the zoning commission oh, okay. and ourselves and the zoning commission. Yeah. Just so we can all get on the same page and know what to anticipate. And then when the if the zoning commission comes back to us, you know, we gave them we asked them about a year ago to develop. What develop, amend, develop regulations for mm -hmm. net solar, and they're about. To, I think they they took the information and decided. Well, they, I should they haven't decided anything yet, but actually, one one of them told me today that they plan to make a recommendation to us to not not do anything, and then they are planning on going ahead with the comprehensive land use plan. So. Temporary use is tabled, now zoning, solar is tabled, and now comprehension. Right. So that's fine, they probably have, they can make their case, but I, I feel like I need to be educated and the BZA should be educated on what might be coming their way. Do you want to take on scheduling this? Yes, and I was thinking, not before the election, how about mid-November? Is that too soon? That sounds good to me. So this is a study group, an informational meeting, or something that's not a township trustees action meeting or whatever you would yeah, no, it, right. wouldn't, it wouldn't need to be a, a, one of our, I don't see why it would be one no. of our official meetings. No, it's a, a, a public presentation, I'd say, with, with special invite to the commissions and the trustees. But, but you're saying public meeting more than just the officials you've talked about, other people could come to that. Yes. Oh, yeah. I would assume the two groups that have formed the set representatives. I was at the last zoning commission meeting, and um, I cannot speak for them, but I can say that I do not recall them making a motion mm -hmm. to formally table or making a oh, motion right. to formally do anything other than they talked about we will study this and we will come back in November and have another meeting. Okay. Now they had a point of view expressed informally among them, but there was no motion. There was no, we're taking action. I, I think I'm representing that correctly. Okay, thank you. Because it almost sounds like somebody has told you that they took action and have decided to table it, but they did not yeah, mention I, that word table yeah. during the meeting, and they did not vote on such a thing during the meeting, as best I recall. Thank you, Fred. I mean, so I'm saying if, there, if that is a sense that people have, it is an informal sense, it is not an action taken, okay. in my mind. That makes sense. And maybe now that I'm thinking about it, they don't meet again until like the November twenty first or something. They're not meeting this month. Right. So perhaps if this happens before then it would give them some direction. Could, could inform their decision. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks I'll for look forward to that in the middle of November. Yeah. It's good. Dale Arnold is available. He said he was in the middle of November. Any other business? 
uh, the meeting's adjourned. <laughs>